Hello again, friends. In our last video, I showed you how to get Raspberry Pi OS installed on a Raspberry Pi and connect to it via SSH. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy, run, and debug code on ARM devices like my Raspberry Pi. Remember, even if you're not using a Raspberry Pi, you can still apply these concepts to similar ARM devices. Before we get started, I recommend you enable passwordless SSH access to your Raspberry Pi. This will make it easier to deploy and debug your code. The .NET IoT docs located at this URL link to a great tutorial on how to do this. Let's walk through that now. I'm in PowerShell on Windows, but these commands should work in other shells on other operating systems as well. I'll start by running this command to print the contents of the .ssh folder in my profile directory. I'm looking for a file named id underscore rsa.pub, which contains the public key for my ssh key pair. Since I don't have this file, I'll use the ssh keygen command to generate a new key pair. Listing the contents of the .ssh directory again shows the file is present now. Referring to the documentation I showed you earlier, I'll paste the command that copies the public key to the Raspberry Pi into Notepad. I'll change the target username and IP address to match my Raspberry Pi, and then I'll copy the command and paste it into PowerShell and run it. When prompted, I'll type in the password for the Pi user, and the command will copy the public key to the Raspberry Pi. Now that the key is on the device, I can connect again without typing a password. This not only saves a lot of time, but it'll also make it easier to configure Visual Studio Code to do remote debugging. Now we're ready to run some code. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code as my main development environment to make it easier to follow along if you're using macOS or Linux. I'll also demonstrate everything using Visual Studio on Windows. Either way, you'll also need the .NET 7 SDK. Before we get started, let's talk about why I recommend doing development work on a PC instead of in the Raspberry Pi OS desktop environment. As of this recording, the c -sharp extension for Visual Studio Code doesn't support the 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS, which is the default version. It runs fine on the 64-bit version, but given the performance constraints of the relatively low-powered Raspberry Pi, I recommend using a more powerful development machine for the best experience. This footage is with a 64-bit OS on my Raspberry Pi 4. It works, but the performance isn't great. Let's go back to my development PC, and I'll get the code I'll be working with. Here's a shell on my development PC. I'm going to start by cloning the sample app repository from GitHub. It's located at this URL. The project is in the animate folder inside the repo. I'll switch to the project directory and open it in Visual Studio Code. Here's the code. It's not a long program. It's a fun animation demo that prints output to the console. I'll test it by opening a terminal pane in Visual Studio Code and running .NET Run. It seems like it's working, so I'll press Ctrl-C to stop it. If you're using Visual Studio, you can use the Clone Repository feature. Once the repo is cloned, you can run the app in the IDE using any of the usual methods. The app opened on my other monitor, and I had a little trouble dragging it to my screen capture monitor. Since we've seen the app running, I can close it now. Now that we've seen the app running, let's see how to deploy it to the device. There are two ways to package your app for deployment, framework dependent, and self-contained. Framework-dependent deployment creates a version of your app that uses the .NET runtime that's installed on the target device. Self-contained deployment creates a version of your app that includes the .NET runtime, so it can run without any dependencies on the target device. Framework-dependent deployment is smaller, but self-contained deployment is more portable. For these videos, we'll use self-contained deployment so we don't have to worry about installing the .NET runtime on the device. 
From the terminal in VS Code, I'll use the .NET Publish command shown here to create a self-contained version of my app, making sure to use the right runtime option for the target environment. In my case, that's Linux ARM64 because I'm using the 64-bit OS. Take note of the output path that contains the published app. Looking inside that directory, we see the application files along with the .NET runtime. If I'm using Visual Studio, I'll right-click on the Project and Solution Explorer and select Publish. Then I'll specify that I want to publish to a folder and select Finish to generate the publish profile. Since we're going to be debugging later, I'll select the debug configuration. I'll also select the self-contained deployment mode along with the right target runtime for my operating system. After saving the published profile, I'll click Publish. When the publish is done, I'll take note of the output path. Now that I've got published files, the next step is to copy them to the device. This process is the same regardless of IDE. First, I'll use the ssh command to create a folder on the destination device. Then I'll use the scp command to copy the files. The syntax for the scp command looks like this. If you prefer a drag and drop file copy tool, there are lots of options available. This is an open source tool called Fallzilla. Now that I've copied the application to the Raspberry Pi, I'll SSH to the device and switch to the app directory. Listing the contents of that directory shows all of my files, including this file called animate with no extension. This is the executable shim that launches the app. Before I can run it, I have to mark it as executable with this command. Now I can run the app on the Raspberry Pi. When I decide I've seen enough of the animation, I'll press Ctrl-C to stop execution. I've deployed the app to the device and I've made sure it runs. Now let's see how to debug it. Before I can debug the app, I need to install the .NET debugger on the device. I'll go to the documentation site and copy this command, then I'll run it on the Pi. It downloads and runs a script to install the debugger. Now I'll go back to the docs and copy the launch.json configuration for a self-contained app. In code, I'll go to the run and debug tab and generate the launch.json file. Now I'll click the gear icon to open the file. From there, I'll paste in the configuration. I'll give the configuration a unique name, and I'll set the path to the executable in the working directory. After saving the file, I can select the configuration from the dropdown and press F5 to start the app. The animation displays oddly because the debug console displays text differently, but the app is running. I can set breakpoints, step through code, and inspect variables. Using Visual Studio is even easier. I'll start by running the app on the device. In Visual Studio, I'll go to the Debug menu and select Attached Process. I'll select SSH as my connection type, and then I'll fill out the form with my connection info. After I've filled out the form, I'll click Connect. Visual Studio handles installing the debugger, so all I have to do is select the running process from the list. I'll select the Manage Code option, and now I can debug the app. 
That's all for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to use the .NET IoT libraries to control general purpose input output pins for things like LEDs and relays. See you then.